you know, at some point I should have predicted that I would eventually dive deep into the messy rabbit hole that is Yakuza 4. So I recently made a video dissecting the four protagonists of the game Masayoshi Tanimura, and after finishing the script, I just assumed that I would eventually move on from talking about Yakuza 4 for at least a while. But as a result of me having to revisit scenes from this game, my mind is trapped in this void of overthinking as I try to extrapolate the events of this convoluted plot. Anyway, to dial back, a couple of months ago, when I made the Yakuza games tier list, I shared my gripes with the Ueno Sewa clan massacre, and I thought it was a poorly thought out idea that's impossible to imagine anyone subscribing to the plan they had in mind. However, because I had to revisit those scenes for my analysis of Tanimura, I had to also think deeper about those events, and I'm starting to believe that this idea is actually not as contrived as I thought it was, at least from a narrative viewpoint. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have made this video under normal circumstances, but because I dunked on this scene in the previous video, I feel a sense of responsibility to clarify on my stances because to be honest, I just don't agree with my criticisms anymore. So starting off with my first issue, I thought it was strange that they thought Sajima would be able to take out 19 people. Now this actually isn't that much of a big deal because for one, it didn't seem like any of the members there were armed and as strange as that is, it still means that Sajima had a bit of an advantage there. Secondly, Sajima is actually a big fucking chad. This is the same dude that's about as equal as Kiryu in terms of strength since both of them have tied twice, so I don't think it's that outrageous that they would entrust him to take out 19 enemies, especially when they didn't even seem to expect an attack from anyone, so they were caught off guard. So that's mostly a non-issue, but another problem I had was that it seemed odd that neither Katsuragi nor Sugiyuchi considered the possibility the forensic experts could have analyzed their bullet wounds and even identified the firearms they used. Now the thing is, while this is still true, at the same time, getting away with this might not actually be that unlikely. I say this because as long as both Katsuragi and the chairman of the clan are still alive, they could testify and identify the killer as Saejima, which would immediately make him the prime suspect. The thing is, an unfortunate truth is that neglecting evidence is actually something that happens in real life all the time. For example, there's this prisoner called Kevin Cooper that is currently on death row because he was accused of murdering a family, and while there is evidence that points at him being a killer, there's also a lot of evidence that makes it very difficult to believe that he was the one, like the fact that the motive doesn't make any sense, like how the surviving victim didn't even recognize his face when he was shown on television until he was persuaded by the police, or even the fact that there's a lot of evidence pointing out that it was a group of people that killed the family and not just a single person, which would at the very least rule him out as the sole killer. But even with the mountain of evidence going against this case, he's still on death row even till this day. There's also the John Tessier case in which he was accused of murdering a 7 year old girl and while there was certainly circumstantial evidence pointing at him being the perpetrator, there was also a major problem with the case, that being the timeline of events, which made it impossible for him to have committed a crime in the period that was established as when the murder occurred. Despite being a crucial piece of evidence, it didn't stop the police from wanting to prosecute him and pull some mental gymnastics to try to prove that he was guilty though he was later released after the court decided to submit the evidence proving him innocent. I think this is especially likely to happen in a Yakuza series because of the fact that throughout the games, the police have been portrayed as being, for lack of better terms, very incompetent. As long as they have a chosen suspect, a witness to identify the murder and testify against him, I don't think it's reaching to say that it would probably be enough for them to settle on the case. I mean, think about it. Under normal circumstances, for what other reason would they want to suspect that someone else killed the 18 men? It's not like Saejima himself is going to try to plead guilty and contest their accusation by proving that he had an alibi or something, even though he was literally there. In fact, in all likelihood, the Tojo clan would probably just tell him to turn himself in as a way of compensating the Ueno Sewa clan for having one of their men kill 18 of their members. They would definitely not try to defend someone who was disrupting the diplomatic relationship between both clans, so there's really no one who would try to file an appeal in favor of Saejima's innocence. Therefore, the police wouldn't have any reason to suspect anyone else, even if there was some sketchy evidence. I know most of us probably imagine the police working similarly to how they do in detective shows where it almost feels like they're investing all of their brain power and resources to get to the bottom of the truth, but in real life, it's not exactly like that. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes, police departments choose to work on their cases more efficiently, to the point where at times they'll even force a confession out of someone just for the sake of resolving the case as soon as possible, even if there are some flaws with their conviction which can unfortunately lead to tunnel visions. Then add in the fact that the chairman of the clan literally saw Katsuragi try to protect him and took a bullet for him. 
With all of these descriptions, it's really hard to imagine the cops in this series suddenly shift the focus to Katsuragi as the prime suspect, with the exception of people like Taiki Tanimura who ended up getting killed anyway as a result of getting too deep. Something else that would make the situation a lot easier is the fact that Sugiyuchi was the one who had to write the report of the incident and submit to the deputy commissioner. So he pretty much had the liberty to leave out some pieces of information that could be incriminating to him. At the very least, as much as he can get away with it. Now, does that mean that I think their plan was perfect? Of course not. It was obviously flawed. In fact, that's kind of the point. If it wasn't flawed, they wouldn't have gotten caught. These two made a huge gamble and it fell on their heads. In fact, the only reason why they got away with it for this long is because Munakata literally let them, in the condition that he would get involved in as well. But while I think their plan was flawed, I no longer find it unbelievable that they went with it. Now of course, there is still one problem which has to do with Katsuragi taking a bullet and expecting to wake up before the other members did. This was another issue I had, like how is he sure that he would wake up in time to finish the job? Well, it turns out there's actually a very easy explanation. He might have just been wearing a body armor. Tanimura did ask if he had armor protection and he gave a pretty vague answer that doesn't explicitly say that he was wearing it. But the reason why I'm certain that he did is because there's already a precedent set for him wearing a body armor, which was later in the game when we literally saw him wearing one. There's also the fact that he may have been the only character there that had been shot previously, then woke up while Sajima was still on rampage to protect the chairman. Almost as if he was coerced and since he already knows that the rubber bullets in the game knock people unconscious for a little while, I just feel like it would make more sense to assume that he came prepared with a body armor in order to protect himself from getting knocked out. Now you might ask, well if he was wearing a bulletproof armor then why did he feel the need to replace the bullets with non-lethal ones? Wouldn't the plan be much easier if he had just let Saijima kill them while protecting himself with a vest? Well, first of all, you can actually still die even if you wear bulletproof armor since all it does is absorb the bullets and stop them from penetrating your skin, but it's still possible to die via blunt force trauma. Secondly, if Saijima were to use real bullets, then there's a chance that he would have killed the chairman, which was definitely not part of their plan. So yeah, I retract my criticisms of the Ueno Sewa clan. I mean, there's still this, which is hilarious, but as far as the issue I had with the Katsuragi conspiracy, I'm not that bothered by it anymore. I've seen some people complain about the massacre scene having a blood fake out, but if you actually watch the original scene, none of the gunshots caused anyone to bleed. Like literally none of them. We just saw blank holes with a little bit of flash, but nothing red spilling out. I mean, I guess there's this shot, but the thing is, we can't really see what part of his body is getting shot because of the camera position. And even then, that probably wasn't even blood, it could have just been ramen soup, which was actually shown to be red just a couple of shots prior. Now granted, there is actually one issue I have, and it has to do with the fact that they never really talked about the bullet marks on their clothes. So I'm not sure how exactly they wrote that off in the report. This is more so lack of clarification, but it's still an important aspect of their case that probably should be relevant to the investigation, but it seemed like no one cared, not even the deputy commissioner, which it does seem like a plot hole to me, but I mean, whatever I guess. Anyway, this was actually an unplanned video. I just had to get this out and update my opinions since I did share them before and I didn't agree with my previous criticisms. And that's that. See you all soon.